let's take out our Bibles and learn together. In order to experience salvation, you have to know the Messiah. And not just his name, Yeshua or Jesus, but you need to know the biblical identity of Messiah, that he is Emmanuel, God with us. If you reject the incarnation that God became flesh, if you reject that, you don't know the biblical Messiah, and therefore, you have not been saved. You have to know his identity in order to receive him in a proper way. And in the portion of scripture that we're going to be studying today, we're going to see that Messiah clearly reveals that he is divine, the only divine son of God. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to Luke's gospel and chapter 5, the book of Luke and chapter 5. Now, in this portion of scripture, we're going to see a miracle. Miracles happen for a purpose. More often than not, miracles confirm the teaching. And we're going to see that Messiah does a miracle to confirm his identity, to answer and to demonstrate to those who are doubting that he is God, to demonstrate that he is. And then secondly, we're going to see that the audience for his words and for his miracle have to do with those who are leaders, those who were connected to the Torah. But just because they were connected to the law of Moses does not mean that they understood the truth of the law. Because when you understand the law, it reveals to us that God is Redeemer. And therefore, God must become incarnate. He must enter into this world in order to do the work of redemption. Well, look with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and we're going to begin in verse 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, and verse 17, where it says, And it came about on one of the days... And what was taking place during these days? Well, what he had been doing over and over, we continue in verse 17, it says, he was teaching. And that's what he was doing, giving the revelation of God, manifesting before them truth, truth concerning him and truth concerning the, the purposes of God and how only through him that the purposes of God could be fulfilled. And we read on the second part of verse 17, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they were sitting. These are the ones who had come from every village. And notice this, all of this is most informative. We're speaking about the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They were the one having come from every village. That's important. From all the villages of where? From every village of the Galilee, from Judea, and then also we read from Jerusalem. So significant. What we're having here is people of, of influence, teachers of the law, the Pharisees who were most influential in Jewish society 2,000 years ago. And they were all there. And that should tell the reader something significant is about to happen. And notice what is written in the next part of the verse where it says, and the power of the Lord was, meaning the power of the Lord was present at that time. Now, because Messiah was there, the presence of the Lord's power was always available to him. In fact, the power of the Lord dwelt within him. It is his power 
but in a unique way we are going to see that this power was present and then we have a conclusion where it says in most bibles for him to heal or the texas receptus says for to heal them and as probably most of you know i like the textus receptus i think when we translate it not in the way that makes immediate sense for him to heal well yes he heals but if we pay attention to that textus receptus it says and of course it's greek and it says for healing them for him to heal them why is that important well we're going to see that they needed healing they were not having the right expectations they did not know the time of god's visitation upon them they did not know who messiah was and is and therefore this healing is to bring about spiritual healing that comes through truth what truth who messiah is they weren't aware of that and we need to ask ourselves a very important question are we are we aware of his biblical identity that he is the only divine son of god well let's move on into the next verse verse 18 it says and behold whenever that word behold appears in the bible it tells the reader pay attention something very significant is about to take place and behold men were carrying upon a mat a man who was paralyzed now if we look here this word for being paralyzed is in the greek perfect what does that mean well he had been paralyzed he is paralyzed and left to the natural he would continue to be paralyzed meaning this unless something unique happened this man was going to be paralyzed until the day that he died but again remember how this verse verse 18 opens up with the word behold it tells us in a moment there's going to be something of great significance and notice concerning this group of men who had brought him carried him on that that pallet that mat it says and they were seeking to do something to bring him in and to place meaning place this one who is paralyzed to place before him meaning to place this one who is paralyzed before yeshua that is their objective verse 19 and not having found a way to bring him in what did they do well it says that they took some very unique action because of this crowd it was hard for them to enter in and bring him before yeshua because of the crowd so what did they do having gone up upon the roof and through the roof and that is through the tiles of the roof they let him down upon that that mat into the midst meaning before yeshua so they with a little bit of extra effort they accomplished their objective they were carrying this one who was on that that pallet what we might think of as a stretcher and they brought him to the house that yeshua was teaching within and we see that there was such a crowd they could not bring this one before yeshua now notice how there is an agreement we are told that on that day in a unique manner power was present for healing but we're not talking about 
a physical healing of just this individual, that's going to take place. But what is emphasized is God's desire. That's what Luke is presenting to us. God's desire to heal them. And who's them? All those individuals, these Pharisees and the teachers of the law that had come from every village in the Galilee, in Judea, and also Jerusalem, that they might know the truth, and through the truth, they might experience life, that life that comes through redemption, recognizing the identity of Yeshua. That's what was the purpose. Oftentimes, God has a purpose. He wants to do something. The question is, are we going to agree with him? Well, look now to verse 20. And seeing their faith. What faith? The faith of these men who were carrying this one who had been paralyzed. And seeing their faith, he said to him. So seeing the faith of these men who were carrying the paralyzed one, Yeshua spoke directly to him, meaning the one who is paralyzed. What did he say? Man, literally. It's speaking about a term referring to human beings. Now, we see a very specific miracle that's going to take place on a particular individual, on that man. But the word here tells us that Messiah wants to bring about restoration, healing, put things back in God's order. And he wants to do that for all of humanity. So he says, man, your sins are forgiven of you. Now, grammar is important. Where it says here, your sins are forgiven. The, the tense of that, that word for being forgiven has to do with something that is happening and something that's going to have implications into the future. What he's saying is, I'm going to forgive your past sins, your present sinful condition, and you will continue to be forgiven into the future. In other words, Messiah's forgiveness is whole. It is complete. It deals with the problem of our sins entirely. It does not lack anything. It is a complete forgiveness. So very significant what is being said here. But look at verse 21. The power was present that day to bring about spiritual healing upon them. Again, who's the them? These leaders, these Pharisees, these teachers of the law. Messiah is doing a miracle for them that he might reveal his identity to them. But notice their response, verse 21. And they began, who's that? The Pharisees and the scribes, literally the scribes and the Pharisees. They began to reason. And this word for reason in this context implies doubt. They heard what he said. Man, your sins are forgiven you. And they doubted. And what did they doubt? They doubted his authority to do that. Why? Well, we'll see in a moment. But they were saying, look at the second part of verse 21. Who is this one who speaks blasphemy? Now, what we have here is the Son of God. And he, based upon his identity, he has the authority to forgive sins completely. Sins in their entirety. That there's no longer any presence of sin from God's standpoint, God's perspective in us. We are totally and eternally forgiven. And what do they say? Well, look carefully. They are saying, who is this one 
who speaks blasphemy. For who is able to forgive sins except only God? Now, that's true. And this is a great example of the New Testament revealing to us the identity of Messiah that he's not just a mere man. He's fully man, but he's also God. He is the God among us. And that's why, look at what the scripture says. Who is able to forgive sins except only God? Verse 22. Now, verse 22 affirms his divinity. Let me ask you a question. What does God know? The answer is God knows everything. And when did God know everything? Always. There was never a time that God did not know everything. Why does he know everything? Because he's God. And what we see here is another verse of scripture that is pointing to his divinity. Why do I say that? Look at verse 22, but Yeshua. Now, why is it that word, but, that, that Greek conjunction, day? Because that Greek word, day, implies a connection with what was just said, but in a contradiction, meaning Yeshua is going to say something that contradicts what they have said in themselves, what they believe. He is going to show something that is in contrast to that. And notice verse 22. But Yeshua, having known, he's always known their thoughts. This speaks to his divinity. It is in contrast to what they thought. Who is this one who speaks blasphemy? Well, God cannot blaspheme himself. The only reason that they thought he was speaking blasphemy is because they did not believe in his divinity. They did not know his identity, and that's why they needed healing. Verse 22, but Yeshua, having known their reasoning, he answered, he said to them, why do you reason in your hearts? Now, he's saying here, and remember, I made mention, this reasoning implies a doubt. So he says, why are you reasoning? Why are you doubting in your heart? Verse 23. Now, there's a degree of grace here. These individuals are unbelieving. They are doubting his identity. He doesn't get angry. What does he do? He is going to do something in order to confirm who he is. And this is one of the primary purposes of a miracle. He does miracles. Why? To confirm truth. He is truly the divine son of God, the only divine son of God. He knows their thoughts and he responds to the thoughts of their heart, not what they have said. All of this was inwardly, but he knows it because he knows, like his father, all things. So verse, verse 23, what is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven of you or to say, rise up and walk. Now, remember, who's he speaking to? He's speaking to one who is paralyzed. And remember the scripture. This one has been paralyzed. He is paralyzed. And in the natural, he will continue to be paralyzed. But there is authority in the word of Messiah. And therefore, he says, rise up and walk. And that authority that's going to be manifested and taking this one who was supposed to be forever paralyzed, that is, until the day that he died, and to give him the ability to walk through his word 
shows and confirms that he also has, and here's the key word, authority to forgive sins. That's exactly what the scripture's going to tell us. Look again at verse, verse 23. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you or to say, rise up and walk. Verse 24. Now, notice he's going to reveal to us his purpose. Verse 24. But in order that you should know, and again, that phrase, you should know, that word know is in the perfect meaning. You should have known this in the past. You ought to know it now, but you will know it into the future if you accept what, what Messiah is going to do. And that is that, that he has the authority. Notice what the scripture says, in order that you know that the Son of Man has authority. Now, this Greek word, authority, exousia, means authority, but also it contains within it the concept of power. So he has authority, but he also has the means, the resources, the power to carry out his word so that you might know that the son of man has authority upon earth to forgive sins. He said to the one who had been paralyzed. And again, we're looking at a word that means this one has been, is, and should continue to be paralyzed, but it's the authority of God that changed this that did this miracle that confirms his authority over all things, over sickness, over disease, over being paralyzed, and over sin. He says, in order that you might know that the Son of Man upon earth has authority to forgive sins, he said to the one having been paralyzed, to you I say, rise up and take your mat and go into your house. Now, why is that there? Go into your house? Well, go home. That is a, an image of him being restored. He is going back and he's going to live out his life as he should. Not being paralyzed, which is the outcome of sin. Now, I didn't say his sin, but all sickness, all disease goes back to the original sin. And because we are living in a sin-stained wor world, we see manifestations of that. People being disabled, people being blind, people being deaf, people having disease, people having different handicaps. That's all because of original sin. And sometimes sins that come from that original sin. So he says, go into your house, verse 25. And immediately having stood up before them, that's the important part. All of this happened, how? Before them. Look again, verse 25. And immediately having stood before them, he took that which he was lying upon, and he went away into his house. Now, what do we see here? Well, Yeshua. Yes, he healed him, but did you miss something? What else did he do? He gave this one a command. Take up your mat and go home. And this one took up his mat and he went home. What does that mean? It means that healing should lead to obedience. If you have been healed, and I'm talking about being saved, receiving that forgiveness of sins, the outcome of that should manifest itself through obedience to Yeshua's commands. That's what we should glean from this. And then finally, it says, look if you would to the end of verse 25. It says, he went away into his house, glorifying God. What we see is that salvation, 
healing, forgiveness, all of this work that comes through the authority of Messiah should cause us to obey and to give glory to God. Verse 26, last verse. And amazement took hold of all, and they were glorifying God, and they were feel, filled with fear, saying that we have seen, and notice this, we have seen, most Bibles will say, a remarkable sign, but that word for remarkable is a word for glory and the preposition alongside meaning that they were brought alongside of glory. And what glory are we talking about? Very simply, the presence of God through the person of Messiah Yeshua. All of this happened because a man was there? No. It happened because God was there. God who knows thoughts, God who knows all things, and God who is able to do all things. So what's the takeaway for us? Well, if you want forgiveness of your sins, if you want restoration in your life, if you want to be positioned where you ought to be, then you need to acknowledge one thing, that the Son of Man has authority. The authority to forgive sins. And of course, as we heard, only God is able to do that. This is a primary passage of Scripture that teaches clearly the divinity of Yeshua. That he's not simply fully man, but he's also fully God. And if you reject that, you are rejecting healing in that fullest sense. You are rejecting the forgiveness of sins. You are re rejecting his authoritative word to bring restoration into your life. Accept the truth concerning our Messiah. Well, I'll close with that until next time. Shalom from Israel.